Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Today I had the extreme pleasure of learning two hadiths from my Mufti Meng course. Uh, the first one was from what was learned from the speech of the earliest prophets if you feel no shame, then do as you wish. Uh, this hadith is in relation to uh, our morals, values, and conduct because that is basically the source of shame. If you have no morals, then you will have no shame. If you have no values or and your conduct is poor, then you have no shame. Um, so what I'm going to look at is a little bit of the what it means to me, of course. And um, I think a lot of it is to do with subjective morality here. So some people will do, will not do wrong things because they are worried others will see them. Now, this is almost like putting them in a position of extreme power over yourself and like idolizing them in a way. And this is very haram, obviously, and something that we as Muslims should not do. So their shame is based on what others will think. But what about our shame towards Allah? So when your shame is based on if you think others will see you, then when you know they won't see you, you're going to go into the haram, you're going to go into bad things. But if our shame is based on the displeasure of Allah, then we are always going to remain steadfast in our own beliefs. And obviously this is something that has to be worked towards, especially for myself as a convert. Uh, it's not ingrained in me, so something I have to work hard to do. Um, the second hadith was very short and uh, it was basically say, I believe in Allah, so like the shahada, like the utterance of it by tongue, and then be steadfast. So this is, they're actually both very well related because if you are steadfast in your belief of Allah, your shame is based on the displeasure of Allah and then you will not be doing things just for the sake of others. You won't only be doing them for the pleasure or displeasure or to avoid the displeasure of Allah. And again, I think this is a very, two very powerful hadiths. And I have to say, like, I, I've been very much enjoying learning about the hadith because I've always been a very practically minded person. Like, uh, even when I was doing my master's in educational technology, every time the professor would send an article that I believed had no practical application. It was extremely difficult for me to like even read it because I just saw no application to what I was doing as a teacher or educator. And that is the strength of the Hadith and the Sirah because I started learning the Sirah of the Prophet as well. There are just very practical application based things that you can learn to become closer to Allah because if we emulate the most perfect human ever created, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, then we are getting closer to Allah because he was the living embodiment of the Quran. So, yeah, um, that's my limited knowledge based on it. And again, uh, just one little thing, like to be steadfast, like your deeds to Allah is is a matter of increasing your knowledge. Like you can't, you can't go, you can't follow something you don't know about. So my advice here is do what I'm doing. Try to learn a lot more. I'm just at the tip of the iceberg here, but I've been enjoying it immensely, and inshallah you will be too. So thank you very much for watching. Masalama.